All change in Manchester. Two managers out, maybe Rooney too, but who is coming in? What's next for Arsenal's transfer plans this summer? And breaking the bank at Monaco, Tevez and Falcao? Really? Joining me today is ex-England international Les Ferdinand and Goal.com correspondent Greg Stobart. I'm James Richardson. This is Transfer Talk. Item one, Les. Wayne Rooney's chances of being a Man United next season. Can't see it. Um, not many players have, have had handy two uh, transfer requests in at Manchester United and still remain there. Alex Ferguson left him out of the squad and I think that paves the way for David Moyes to allow Wayne Rooney to, to slip away from Manchester United. All right, where, where do we think Rooney's going to go then? I think the most likely option now, would, you'd have to say, is Chelsea. There aren't many clubs in the world who can afford Wayne Rooney with the transfer fee and his £250,000 a week wages. Real Madrid and Barcelona aren't going to be interested. PSG could afford him, but on a sporting level, I can't see him wanting to go there. So you're looking at Premier League clubs. He'd probably want to stay in the Premier League too. I think he's probably already agreed a deal with someone. He'll know where he wants to go, otherwise he wouldn't be asking to leave. Players don't do that, certainly not at Man United. I think he's going to end up at Chelsea, but Arsenal could well be interested too. Wow, a ruin moo at Stamford Bridge. That'd be fantastic. What about, though, the rest of the, the Man United side? Do you see big changes there as David Moyes comes in? Yeah, I, don't, I think if, if Rainy, Rain Rooney goes, obviously there's been history between him and David Moyes in the past, so you, know, you see that as, as something that will happen. Um, but um, I, I see Baines maybe coming to, to, to Manchester United or Fellaini, or maybe both. Baines over Evra, a lot of people can see that. Fellaini, will he fit into their midfield? Man United needed a central midfielder for about five years and it's probably the one thing Ferguson's not done in terms of addressing the squad. He hasn't needed to, they've won the title by a mile this season, but they could really do a central midfielder. Personally, I think they need someone, more of a playmaker, someone like Luka Modric, but Fellaini would certainly do a job. And as Les says, David Moyes is going to make, want to make his mark and he's going to want to sign players he knows about and he knows all about Leighton Baines, he knows all about Fellaini. And he knows all about Wayne Rooney and, you know, Ferguson set him up very nicely to kick Wayne Rooney on his way out of the door now. Also out in Manchester, Roberto Mancini looks like Manuel Pellegrini coming in, although there's still talk that maybe Napoli or maybe even more possibly Barcelona might hijack that deal. If he does come in, uh, Les, are you a fan? I'm a big fan. I like the way his teams play. Um, you, you know, he seems to be able to galvanise a squad, and I think that's what Man City are looking for. Um, Mancini had a load of problems with the players. Um, well, individual problems with uh, Tevez and, and people like that, you know, fell out with a lot of players. And I think what they want is a manager that's going to come in, play the style of football that uh, Manchester City's owners want to see and at the same time have a, have a unified squad. The word City used in their statement when they sacked Mancini was holistic and we're not quite sure what it means, but they're trying to build a philosophy around the club. They want a manager who's going to look at the youth team, look at the younger players, who's going to be able to build a title-winning team without demanding 50 million for new players as Mancini did at times. Pellegrini plays excellent football and from those who know, they say that he's got really good man management skills and that was Mancini's major, major problem. He fell out with too many of the players and he even fell out with people above him like Chiki Begiristan, the sporting director, and that was the end of him really. Mm. He was too cheeky for cheeky indeed. And uh, Pellegrini speaks better English by all accounts. One thing he won't be building a championship winning side without is uh, Carlos Tevez, so they say. Looks like he's going to, to Monaco, Greg. There's a very good chance Carlos Tevez will leave Man City this summer. I mean, he's been pushing for a transfer every, every summer for a while. He's got one of the, uh, one of the slyest agents in the business in Kia Jarabchin. And Monaco are a very big spending side. They, they're looking to win Liga next season after just winning promotion. I can see Tevez leaving. I can see quite a lot of departures from City this summer. They've gone through this root and branch review and it started with Mancini leaving and a lot of his staff. And it's going to end up with a lot of players leaving too, I think. Um, certainly Tevez, Dzeko, they've already sold Balotelli. Players like Gareth Barry, Jodian Lescott, Michael Richards, I can see all of them leaving. And as Begiristone really makes his mark and tries to turn Man City into the Barcelona of English football. Very interesting. Anyone from that long shopping list that you think Spurs could do with? Guys? I mean, if you're looking for a striker, which I think uh, Spurs will, will be in the market for this season, I mean, obviously, Dzeko has not had the greatest of seasons this year, but we've seen what he's capable of doing. Um, it's about whether he wants to stay in the UK or not, or whether Spurs make an offer. 
Will they? Will they? What will Spurs do about Adebayor, do you think? I think Adebayor, you know, um, is, it, he would admit himself it's been a disappointing season for him in the fact that when we saw last year he scored 17 goals, he's been nowhere near that standard except for the last few games. Uh, he's, uh, he's produced the sort of stuff that we know he can produce. When he plays like that, I don't think there's a, a, another centre forward in the league that's as good as him, mm. but for three or four games of a season is not good enough. It's been classic Adebayor, it's been classic Adebayor really. I mean, you saw how he played last season. He was the best, probably the best. Adeboyo at his best is probably as good as Spurs can do at the moment. But he's been so lazy this season. The crowd have been on his back. He's fallen out with the manager. Five league goals isn't good enough. But then he turns it on in the last couple of weeks of the season. And what he's been doing, his performance against Chelsea and Stoke and maybe against Sunderland at the weekend, that could actually get Spurs Champions League football. All right. Well, meanwhile, if they look up, uh, up the Midlands, they might find a Christian Benteke and altogether more... Uh, attractive prospect with his 28 goals in all competitions for club and country this season and, and what did he cost four and a half million pounds for Villa? Yeah 19 goals in a league and you know that's that's not to be frowned at in your first season that's absolutely fantastic um, the only question I have with, with a player like that he's done it absolutely brilliantly is whether he can do it consistently he's had a great year at, at a struggling side in Villa um, perhaps if he goes with better players, he'll score even more goals. You never know, it could be a one-season wonder. Right, Spurs not the only club interested. I think Arsenal are having a good look at Benteke. I think he said actually that he, uh, he was an Arsenal fan and he'd, he'd love to play for them one day. Um, he could play for a lot of teams in the Premier League based on this season's form, but has, is it Michael Ricketts syndrome? Is he just going to be a, a one-season wonder? I think for the money you're talking, which is going to be 15 million plus, probably upwards of 20 million, You'd want to see him do it for another year, really. Mm. All right, well, uh, one of our uh, viewers, Pipe Lobo 8, requests that we speak a little bit more about what Arsenal are planning this season. So, Greg, apart from Benteke, who might else uh, they be in for? I think they're going to spend money this summer, Arsenal. I think Wenger's realised now that they need to spend if they're going to challenge for the title. Whether they're, they're in the Champions League or not, they've signed new sponsorship deals, a new kit deal. Um, I think they need a goalkeeper. I think Chesney's going to move aside and they'll bring in a first choice goalkeeper. Uh, maybe someone like Begovic from Stoke. I think they'll look at improving the midfield as well. There's been a lot of talk that they might try and lure Cesc Fabregas back. He's not, had a love, he's not had a great season at Barcelona and they've got first option on him. I think the priority for them, just like Spurs, will be to sign a striker. Finally then, let's just uh, return to Monaco. We mentioned the fact that Tevez is supposedly on his way now to the Principality. But what about that extraordinary swoop for Falcao, Les? This is the one that um, I can't get my head around at the moment, you know, because arguably the best striker in, in Europe at the moment and um, going to Monaco. I know that, as you said, they're going to have a go at trying to win the, the league there and, and rival PSG. A lot of money has gone into the club, but we want to see him playing in one of the best leagues in the world, and that's the Premier League, and I was hoping that this is where he was going to come. And we were all convinced he was going to go to Chelsea as well. It looked nailed on for months and months. But Monaco have come in, they've got their Russian billionaire owner, they've blown Chelsea out of the water. You do wonder whether... There are some games at play here with Falcao's agents, especially whether... Well, they own, what, 60% of him? Yeah, he's, there's some big third-party ownerships with Falcao, which probably was one of the issues with him going to Chelsea, the, the deal. Um, he's owned about 60% by a consortium, um, led by George Mendes, his agent, who also is the agent of Cristiano Ronaldo and Jose Mourinho. And Peter Kenyon, the former Chelsea chief executive, he's on the consortium too. So it gets very complicated, but... I have a feeling they plant, they're planting him in Monaco and he could well be on, on the move in January or next summer to Real Madrid. All right, well, it's so interesting because Monaco themselves have 12 months to sort out their tax situation with League One, who have now said that as from June the 1st, 2014, if they want to play in League One, they have to be registered financially in France. And the suggestion then that he might go from Atletico to Monaco and then after a healthy pause, head off to Real. Magnificent stuff. Well, that's Transfer Talk. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. And if you have any questions for us, just leave them on Facebook, Twitter or YouTube.